So I invite you now to close your eyes and just notice your breath. Notice how the breath is always given. And as you follow your breath with your attention, I invite you to allow it to bring in, as you inspire, God's love, God's light, divine source energy. And as you exhale, you exhale everything else. Breathing in that divine life energy. Feel it filling you up. And then releasing everything else. And so allow your your breath to become deeper and fuller. Inhaling divine life energy and releasing everything else. Releasing the cobwebs of thoughts and feelings and emotions that no longer serve you. And as you breathe in, remember that the energy you breathe in is your full complement. It's your full source. And feel yourself relax. I invite you now to feel that place within you, that place within you that is peace, that is still, like the water on an undisturbed pond. With this life force energy, you have choice. You have choice to decide how to use it. And know that the life force energy that comes in inside you becomes energized and stamped. Each electron in your body is stamped with the energy of your consciousness. So as you breathe out, you express who you are. Know that what you send out is the signature of your consciousness. And so pay attention to what you have been signaling. And I invite you now to consider what you would like to transmit. And allow what that is to be fully felt within you. be it love, be it truth, be it joy, whatever quality. And it's that simple and yet so profound.
Thank you, Rhonda and Mike. Rhonda Dene and Mike Bardas. So that's only the beginning of the welcome that you're going to have this morning. Um, this is, as you know, the Center for Spiritual Living in Morristown. My name is Gail Bellawardo. I'm a licensed practitioner here. And while our beloved spiritual director, Reverend Frankie Timmers, is away on a mini sabbatical, we have, the, though we miss her, we have the joy of having guest speakers. And today we have a very special guest speaker, Reverend Jennifer Berkeley, who I will introduce in a few minutes. So if you are here for the first time, welcome. And welcome those of you who have been here before, welcome the new people. So if you're new here, please raise your hand. Okay, we welcome you. We know that you found a wonderful place and a wonderful community. So let us begin where we always begin in our teaching, and that's with prayer. Spiritual mind treatment, which is our word for affirmative prayer. And it is a time that we come together and we know God much more consciously. So I invite you to close your eyes and know with me that there is only one life. There is only one truth. There is only one wise consciousness. And it is God. And it is the all. And in its allness, it is also the many. So I know that each one of us here is an expression of that one. Each one of us here has our full share of that divine source energy and love. And knowing that we live, move, and have our beings in a milieu, in an atmosphere of divine love, which is God's divine livingness, I know that God's love is here with us this morning. It blesses us. It blesses our speaker. It blesses our musicians. And it knows exactly what is right for each and every one of us. So we open our hearts to receive what we are meant to receive today and know that it is good, know that it is holy, know that everyone is blessed entirely. And I release this word with deep and profound gratitude into the law of action, divine mind action, and I know, I truly know, it is done. And so it is. Amen. So the meditation that we did in the beginning was kind of an entree to this reading. And it's from Living the Science of Mind by Dr. Ernest Holmes, who is our founder. And it's from the chapter, You Are a Spiritual Broadcasting Station. Did you ever stop to think that you are a spiritual and mental broadcasting system? and that messages are going out from you in all directions, perhaps even while you're asleep. Messages which have an influence on your environment and the people around you. And since everything moves in circles, the messages you broadcast will come back to you. We are told that the mental atmosphere of a home can influence a dog, a cat, or a canary to the extent that they become neurotic when surrounded by unhappiness or criticism. And I can vouch for that. There is a place where our physical bodies begin and leave off, but the mind has no such limitations and our thoughts penetrate everything around us. We are all broadcasting systems, stations, whether or not we know it. Our thoughts, feelings, and emotions, our faiths, and our fears tend to make an imprint on our environment. We are also receiving sets, but it does not follow that we must tune into every program being broadcast. When we want to listen to a certain program, we tune our radios to its wavelength. The program already is within the ether in the room, but it does not affect our instrument until we tune into it.
And so now it's my great honor and pleasure to introduce Reverend Jennifer Berkeley. Not yet, not yet, I have to give her an intro. She's an ordained Science of Mind minister and is the spiritual director of the Rockland Center for Spiritual Living. She was licensed as a Science of Mind practitioner in 1904, 1994. <laughs> it's been that long. Doesn't she look great? <laughs> In 1994, <laughs> with Reverend Dr. Michael Beckwith, where she learned the principles and the practices of our teaching. She has a master's degree in education and a master's certificate in learning, design, and development. Reverend Jennifer has created and delivered high-end learning programs for the corporate, private, and spiritual sectors. She has been teaching the full Science of Mind accredited curriculum for more than a dec decade, including licensed practitioner training, as many of us know. In her various roles as teacher, counselor, consultant, and spiritual director, she strives to create a community where individuals can come together to discover and express their most authentic self. And she was my first teacher here. She's my dear friend and, and prayer partner. And, and it's just such a blessing to have her inspiration. And she's inspired so many of us here already. And it is without further ado. And here I am coming to you from 1904. <laughs> well, Gail, that will be something we'll remember forever, yes? <laughs> And you'll remind her, Bill, I'm sure. All right, where should I not go? Oh, hmm. Okay, is that good? Oh, let's just take a nice breath in. Through the nose. Out the mouth. Does that feel good? Let's do it again. Through the nostrils. Out the mouth. And once more. Breathing in and breathing out. As Gail so beautifully uh, shared with us in that meditation, we just breathe in the essence, yes? We breathe in the essence of who we are, the essence that is all available to us. See, this is the, this is the miracle of life, is that there is this essence, there is this truth, there is this love, there is this magnificence that is always available to us. It never quits. It never sleeps. It never stops. It never halts itself. It never says, oh, I don't feel like it today. Never. And we have access to that. It created us, and we have access to it. Not only do we have access to it, but, and we are one with it. And because we are one with it, I am what thou art, and thou art what I am. So there is no separation. There's only one. So this morning's topic is create a chain reaction. And that really happens on two levels. It happens on the collective level, and this is the collective, the world is the collective, your community is the collective, your family is the collective. It happens on the collective level, and it also happens first and foremost, as we know, does everything on the individual level. That's where it begins, on the individual level. And so on the collective level, I'd like to share something with you. I'd like to own up to something before we even begin today. And what I would like to own up, what I would like to let you know about me is this, that my happiness and my well-being depends on your happiness and your well-being. So I'm going to say that to you. My happiness and my well-being depends on your happiness and your well-being. Now, I want you to say that back to me, all of you, in unison. My happiness and my well-being depend on your happiness and your well-being. Okay, now I want you to say it like you mean it. <laughs> okay, let's put a little energy into this. 
Let's do this first. Shake it up. Come on, shake it up. Let's get some energy moving. Shake it up. Now, say to me, my, convince me that your happiness and your well-being depends, or my happiness and my well-being depends on your happiness and your well-being. And now I want you to tell somebody in the room. Come on. Tell somebody else. Did you take my sheet off of here? So what you just did, you created a chain reaction. You feel it? Did you feel it? Yeah. Did you feel the shift, the rise, the ascension of energy? Did you feel the rise of the vibration? Yes? yes? yes. It starts with one. It starts with one being authentic, right? And then it starts, it moves to many, and then it moves to many more. Now you may be saying, but Reverend Jennifer, I have been working my whole life to move away from being codependent. Thank you. Yeah, see, I knew you were thinking that. I knew you were thinking that. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean that my happiness or your happiness depends on my happiness? I'm not responsible for your happiness. I'm not going to do whatever you think needs to be done so that you can be happy. I've been working on this for the last 20 years. I was in therapy working on this. I've been praying with my prayer partner about this. I'm not going to shift my life around. I'm not going to change my behavior to make someone else happy. I'm not responsible for your well-being. That's your responsibility. That's your business. And that's one way you can look at it. Yes? And then, and then, there's that little voice inside, inside your head that reminds you, hey, we're all one. We're all in this together. And it's very true. I am not responsible for your happiness and your well-being. But I am responsible for my happiness and my well-being. And I am responsible to be as happy and as well as I can be. And guess what? When I do that, when I allow myself to authentically be that, you all get to share in that happiness and that well-being. So am I responsible? No. But is there an interdependence that takes place in the collective that allows us to share in the happiness and the well-being of each other? Do you feel the energy shift when, when you walk into a room or somebody walks into a room and their energy is really high and really up? And what happens? Everybody feels it. We share in that. And so what we're talking about, not in a codependent, ego-based way, I am responsible for your well-being and happiness. And at the same time, there is an interdependence between us that allows you to get lifted up when I am lifted up. There is a quote that Rumi says, and it was just in this week's Science of Mind magazine. It says, my beloved grows right out of my own heart. My beloved grows right out of my own heart. How much more union can there be? 
How much more union can there be? My beloved, and we're not talking about your romantic beloved. We're all each other's beloveds. Be loved. That's what beloved represents. Be loved. Be loving. Be caring. Be giving. Be receiving. Be. Just be. And in order to be that, in order to help create that chain reaction, because this is a deeper teaching, this truly is a deeper teaching. This understanding that we're all in this together is a deeper teaching. The understanding that we're all in this together gives us the ability <laughs> and the desire, and I'm just going to say it, to wear the t-shirt or the hat or the coat that says, I really care. I really care about you. I really do care about you. I care about you enough that I am willing to be my most authentic self. That's the bottom line. And authenticity has nothing to do with codependency. Authenticity is all about me being who God created me to be, me recognizing my divine name and nature and allowing that divine name and nature to come forth so brightly because when it does, you don't have to wear a t-shirt. When it does, you don't have to wear a hat or a coat because you're wearing it in the very essence of who you are. You're showing up as your more, most authentic self and what's happening? Everybody's seeing that. You know people who when they walk in the room, you're just glad that they're there, yes? Does anybody know somebody like that? You're just happy that person is in your presence. And you know people who walk around all the time wearing the coat or the t-shirt without wearing the coat or the t-shirt or the hat at all that says I really don't care because that person is living in separation that person is living from a place of what lack limitation despair perhaps and when those people walk in the room you feel it too you feel it too. And so it behooves us, for God's sake, <laughs> it behooves us to live as authentically as we can, to be our most authentic self. And that is not something that just happens overnight. You don't wake up one day <laughs> and say, Ooh, I think I'll start being authentic today. <laughs> you don't wake up one day and say, oh, finally got it. I know what God created me to do. I finally got it. So I'm going to start doing that today. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could take one class or have one prayer? I think about that when I go to the gym sometimes. Wouldn't it be great if I could just do this treadmill today and I'm just, you know, I'm done for the rest of my life? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great if I could, I mean, they say some, I like, happen to like broccoli, but, you know, if I, got <laughs> I could stop eating grains just today and then for the rest of my life I can eat all the Italian bread I want? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be wonderful? And it doesn't work that way. Sorry, doesn't work that way. Not in this life plane anyway. Well, and it could work that way if you had the consciousness. Maybe if you had the consciousness of Jesus, it could work that way. Or the consciousness of Buddha, it could work that way. I don't have, I'm not there yet. So it starts with us being honest about where we are in consciousness. Because Ernest Holmes says, you can only start from where you are. You can't start somewhere else. You can't start from where I am. I can't start from where Bill is. We can only start from where we are. And that has to be good enough. It has to be. And so you start from where you are and you set an intention. And your intention is simply, okay, I, my intention, and I made this intention actually sitting in this room many years ago at a workshop with my beloved teacher who has since passed on, Reverend Nirvana Gale. And he had us set an intention in a workshop that he was doing, and my intention was to live the most authentic life that I could live. Now that must have been 
It had to be at least 15 years ago. Had to be. And I am still not all the way there because you never get there. You never get there, but it starts with intention. And once you set that intention, something happens to wake you up. And the intention can be set consciously or unconsciously. It doesn't even have to be something you're aware of. And then you wake up. And what wakes you up? How do you wake up? The alarm clock. And what happens when the alarm clock goes off? <laughs> that's good. You hit snooze. And you may. That's good, Bill. And that's true because you may keep hitting snooze. You may hit snooze. You may get that alarm clock going off for 10 years. And for 10 years, you might keep hitting snooze. Not yet. Not yet. Not ready to wake up yet. Mm -mm, not me. Not today. Not waking up. What else wakes us up? Besides the alarm, because I have to have a Zen clock, so I get like chimes waking me up and they get louder and louder. So I blissfully come out of my sleep. <laughs> what else wakes us up? Come on, you, I know you've been woken up. Sunshine. Sunshine wakes you up. Let's think, what else wakes you up? Think of the, the life, thank, life challenges. You've been walking asleep for the last, me, since 1904. I've been walking asleep. <laughs> I just woke up today. Just today, I just woke up. And sometimes it's the worst possible situation that can wake us up. The, and that wasn't. But the worst possible situation. You know, as they say in recovery, sometimes you've got to hit rock bottom before you wake up. Right? And so those things that happen to us aren't tragedies or failures. They're wonderful awakenings. Wonderful awakenings. And then after you wake up, you say, all right, I'm awake, I'm done. You could go on with my day. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sorry. You know, if this was so easy, if, if, you know, like today I'm doing this workshop, it's called Create a Chain Reaction, and it's all about the journey to authenticity. And I like to say to people, you know how you see these workshops and people say, come to this workshop for an hour and a half and you'll discover your purpose in life. B is, is this being taped? <laughs> B.S. That's never going to happen in an hour and a half. Trust me. If I could teach you or give a workshop that's going to get you there, make you your, or, or allow you to see who you authentically are in an hour and a half, I wouldn't be standing here because I would be a zillionaire, jetting off somewhere, doing something. Yes? Yes. <laughs> and so it doesn't, it doesn't end there. So you wake up, and then the next step after you wake up, is you then say, oh, I want to learn all that I can. I want to learn all that I can about myself, about life, about spirit, about my body. Because sometimes the awakening comes through the physical body. It could be a disease. It could be a desire to excel at something. I'm going to learn all that I can about my mind, about my energy, about spirit. And in this teaching, we call that involvement. I am going to get involved through learning. And the more involved, Ernest Holmes says, in order to evolve, we must involve. And he got that from Thomas Troward. So as the involution takes place, the third part or the third step or the third phase is evolution. You begin to evolve. You begin to ascend. Rise up. And when you walk into a room, the vibration is lifted. When you sit in your spiritual practice, you immediately feel your connection with God. When you think about yourself, hmm, you say, I love myself so much, so you can love me so much, then I can love you so much, and you can start loving me. That's the interdependence. That's the way that we take care of ourselves, our well-being, so that we can share that. And so as we evolve, the next phase is transformation. You begin to transform. 
look in the mirror and you say, wow, that doesn't look like me anymore. Who is that? And it's not, I'm going to say it again, it's not just because I've lived since 1904 and I look in the mirror and I don't recognize who I am. I won't, no more jokes about it, I promise. <laughs> but who is that? People come up to you and they say, what the heck have you been doing? You look pretty good for 66. I know, I'm talking about me, not you. <laughs> Thank God Bill's here. Thank God giving me my cues. <laughs> or people say, you look so happy lately. What's going on with you? You've transformed. You're transforming. Right before your eyes, right before our eyes, you're transforming. And that transformation that takes place, that's a long process. So you know about the butterflies, right? And you know about the stage before the butterfly, which is the caterpillar. There's a story that's told of a man that's walking through the woods, and he sees a caterpillar struggling to get out of that cocoon, struggling to get out of the cocoon. And the man says, I've got to help this caterpillar out. See, that's what happens to us, too. People see us struggling, and they say, I've got to help you out. I gotta, I, I gotta help you out with that transformation. And we cannot believe ever, and this is really important because this is one of my big life lessons, that anybody else knows better than we do what's best for us. Never believe that. Don't believe it about your spiritual directors, me included, or your spiritual teachers. Don't believe that about your political leaders. Don't believe that about your chiropractors. Don't believe that about Anyone, because no one knows better than you what you know for yourself. So this guy's walking along the woods, sees the caterpillar, has his little uh, Swiss Army knife in his pocket, takes it out, and clips the cocoon so the, what is it? The, no, it's not a butterfly yet. Caterpillar can get out easy and, and become what it's meant to become. And that happens, and what ends up happening is the wings never form properly on the butterfly, and the butterfly can never take flight. So this is a lesson for us on transformation because we don't want it to happen too quickly, and we don't want to put our transformation in the hands of someone else. Yes, we need helpers, we need support, we need 12-step programs, we need, I mean, they, they work for us, therapists work for us, practitioners work for us, um, chiropractors work for us, but this, I call these people, this is our posse, right? This is our posse. These are not people that know better than you do what's good for you, and when you move through your transformation, the last step, oh, thank God, is becoming. That's your last step. You've gone through the process of awakening, learning, evolving, transforming, and now you are finally becoming. And guess what? You never get there. You never fully become. You're always becoming. And that's what this journey is all about. Ram Dass said, we're all here walking each other home. This journey is about us walking ourselves and each other home. It is a constant, beautiful, magnificent, joyful celebration of life. Celebration of your authenticity. And you get to be that. You get to become that. My teacher, River Michael, used to say, what keeps me humble is to know that I have become and at the very same time know that I am always becoming. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us alive. Is that becoming? And so we then get to wake up again. We then get to involve again. We then get to evolve. And, and it's just a continuous. But because we never go back in consciousness, we can never go backwards in consciousness, it's always happening at a higher vibration. It's always happening at a higher level. And it becomes more and more and more and more joyful 
because we then get to live life as God, as God, God as me. And we get to live our life that way, and there's really no better way to live. There is no better way to live. Last night I had Chinese food for dinner, and we have a little tradition in our family where we actually do read the, um, the fortunes inside. Not necessarily eat the cookies, although sometimes I will sneak a little piece. And it's my, and this is like, you see, life never ceases to amaze me. My fortune said the most exhausting thing in life is to be insincere. And that is exactly what we're talking about today. It is exhausting not to live your authentic self. It's exhausting. You know what it feels like if you're in a relationship or partnership when you're mad at somebody, when you're in separation? That is exhausting. So when you're in separation from yourself, it's exhausting because you're being insincere, you're not being honest. And so your charge today is to live honestly. Your charge today is to live authentically. Your charge today is to live remembering that you are in an interdependent relationship with everyone and that it is truly up to you to show up on this planet being as well as you can be, being as happy as you can be, and if you're not there yet, don't beat yourself up. Just set an intention. Start right where you are. Set an intention. And then watch. Just watch the magic happen. Because it will happen. It truly will happen. So let us now close that with a spiritual mind treatment, a healing treatment. <sighs> And so I truly do know that there is a power and there is a presence for good in the universe, and I can use it. And I use it right here and right now. This power is love. This presence is God. This power is truth. This presence is life. This power is joy. This presence is spirit itself. And so knowing this... I know the I am that I am. I know that I can never, ever, ever be separate from the love, the joy, the truth. And so I am open now to receive more of all that God is, to express more of all that God is. And I am lifted up. And I am lifted up as I speak this word for myself and for everyone here present. I speak this word knowing the truth for each one of us. And that truth is that we are, we have within us, in our DNA, there is that desire to live authentically. And that desire comes to the surface in such a way that each of us wakes up in our own way. We wake up. Each one of us gets more and more and more involved with spirit, involved with life, involved with truth, involved with love, that the only way we can go is up. The only way, the only thing we can do is ascend and evolve into our greatest yet to be. And each one of us is now, even now in the mind of God, experiencing that evolution. And as we evolve and evolve, we transform. We become all that God created us to be. And then we simply take a breath and allow the becoming to continue and continue and continue for this life is eternal, eternal, and is not in any way, shape, or form defined by our own hmm, time on this earth plane. For this is just a parenthesis in eternity. And so I truly do know for each of us that the becoming is a forever and ever and ever experience. And for this, 
I am so very grateful. And it is with such deep and humble gratitude that I can and I do release this into law, knowing that it is already done. And so it is. Amen. And so I invite you now to say with me this affirmation of healing. I take my chain reaction and I make a difference in the world. And so it is. I got love. I got peace. I got joy flowing like a river. I got hope. I got strength, I got faith to move every mountain. One heart, one mind, one love to move every mountain. I got you, I got me, I got us coming together. I got you. I got me, I got us coming together. One heart, one mind, one love, we're coming together.